friends, so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my daddy. Okay, that's out of the way. Ow! What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I say that Papa was a rolling stone because I started out in Harrisburg uh, this morning bringing you, of course, my morning report, did a midday report in Northern Virginia, and now I'm all the way down at the Red Brick House. I have traveled 300 miles to bring you this report. And, of course, my son, Philly 500, is starting his off-season stuff right now. Apparently, there's a ranking of NFL teams, facilities, and their staff, and this, that, and the other. And the Cowboys are 12. And, of course, Philly 500, I think they said the Eagles are, are fourth. And he's claiming victory that, you know, we are great. We just like beating down the Cowboys. And so, you know, I got here, spent some time with Mama. She's over taking care of some business, and she'll be back here in a little bit. And I'll be back to taking care of Mama. And um, I was going through, and I saw something that I was just like, yeah, it sounds about right. But from blogging the boys, RJ was talking about the Cowboys have an issue at right tackle. And my thing was like, we better not have an issue at right tackle. We just spent $82 million on signing a contract, although that seems to be the thing that we overpay guys coming back from an injury. And so I had a heart attack, and then I started listening to RJ. And RJ brought up, when he starts this thing, a very important, important message. You know, I am a YouTuber here, and I depend on you guys uh, to watch, like, comment, hate, whatever, subscribe to the channel, and so on. And you may like me or may not like me, but I guarantee you that there are plenty of channels out there that you will like. And they all deserve you to you know at least check them out and give them a thumbs up and definitely a like. And that goes for me too. Uh, and apparently a bunch of y'all have been doing it because we have just been on a just like slingshot ride here. We're over 91,000, 91,000. And so I would love, I would love to get over 100,000 before the draft. We're talking about less than two months away. Uh, th that's a tall task, but it would be cool to get that less than 9,000 subscribers. So definitely check it out. Definitely check out, of course, RJ. So I, I had to listen to this, and I want you to listen to it with me as well to see what the hell you talking about, RJ. Boys, YouTube channel, please make sure to subscribe. Like the videos. Those things help us out more than we can possibly tell you. We are chasing down Arrowhead Pride, SB Nation's home for Kansas City Chiefs content. Once we pass them, we are uh, the SB Nation YouTube channel with the most subscribers. So that is something cool for all of us to be a part of here, obviously, at Blogging the Boys. Uh, we, you know, we talk about the Dallas Cowboys, so you know, we're obviously the best. You know, who cares about Super Bowls? We're here to talk about controversy and drama and really just interesting things. Yeah. Um, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, I'm using some heavier words than I think are necessary, but we're about to talk about it. So I think that the context is going to be said out loud. Again, the magic of um, voice in this particular case. Um, as you can see on your screen right here, there seems to be some vague idea slash assumption that the Cowboys could have a need slash competition at right tackle. That's a lot of words because I don't know exactly how to word this. This is a really weird sort of thing. What are you talking about, RJ? Well, in case you didn't see on... Yeah, so that, that's where I was like, right tackle. Okay, now, I'm going to say, let, let me flat out say this, that, you know, Terrence Steele, his rookie year, you know, undrafted rookie free agent, which was a COVID year, um, not being able to have, you know, because here's the thing about it. You were an undrafted rookie free agent, and that means you were broke. You finished college. The Cowboys signed you as a free agent. You end up, you know, going someplace in Dallas in an apartment or whatever, sleeping on a friend's couch and things, and then COVID happened. You're not working out with the team. You can't go to facilities. You don't have a gym. You, you saw guys lifting weights, you know, lifting sofas on, at their house and things like that. So it's hard when you don't have the means and things to do that. 
to show anything. And Terrence Steele, because Lyle Collins ended up having a hip issue, was thrusted into a starting position where he struggled as a rookie. Um, his second year, because a lot of people are like, I don't want to ever see that guy on the field. And they were talking Chaz Green. But his second year, he did great things. He was really, really good. And then he got injured his third year, but the Cowboys ended up signing him to a contract. Um, or was it after his second year he got injured? Sorry. Um, but they ended up signing him to a contract, a long-term one, because they looked at it and said, this guy, this, this boy can play. But again, we've had problems with guys coming back from injury, playing to the level that they played before. And this is one of those cases. So we spent $82 million to lock him in. So back to RJ. On Wednesday, ESPN's Mel Kuyper released oh. his latest mock draft. All right? Okay. Totally normal go. sort of thing. Here we go. This happens Mel all Kuyper. the time. Nobody is surprised by this. Nobody is shocked by this. So what the heck is going on? Well, let's kind of scroll down and, and check things out. Let's move through the mock, move through the mock, move through the mock, because the Dallas Cowboys weren't this bad. They were about uh, this, this bad. bad. Here. 24. All right. Amarius Mims, not a shock, right? This pick would make a lot of sense for the Dallas Cowboys at 24 overall. Nobody is weirded out by the pick. Why are we here, RJ? Why there are we having go. this discussion? I like, okay. Well, I tell you why, because let's read the words, my friend. Let me zoom in just a bit for you just right there. Bit. Make it nice and easy for you. All right. Let me make sure you're good to go. Here we go. Mims has even fewer college starts than Guyton. Talking about, young, uh, you know, other prospects. Mm -hmm. As he was limited to just eight over the past three seasons because of injuries and draft picks in front of him on the Bulldogs. Oh, he's got injuries. Okay. The Cowboys just, also, we didn't know. But when he did play, he made defenders look silly. Mims, 6'7", and 340, lot zero sacks, and just five total pressures across 372 career pass blocks. Sounds like an awesome pick. Mm -hmm. Will NFL teams be scared off of his limited experience, or will they draft him high based on his size and potential? I lean with the latter. Personally, this is a very tackle-rich draft. I lean toward the latter is exactly what he said as well, right? You know, it's kind of the way I'm doing this year. Uh, because he was that good when he got on the field. All this is very normal, RJ. What are we mm -hmm. doing here? Read Thank the you. next yeah, thing. What's going on? To make room for Mims, the Cowboys could part ways with longtime left tackle. Tyron Smith. That isn't shocking. I don't think we think that's going to happen, but would not be shocking nonetheless. Who's a free agent? All right. And it, so it wouldn't be parting with it, would just be not bringing him back mm -hmm. or him wanting to go somewhere else. But keep on reading or have, or him, have him compete with Terrence Steele on the right side. He played right tackle in college, but has the talent to play both sides. Now we read through all this and, and had the fun that we did because this is strange, right? Is this not kind of strange? I find this to be strange. Once again, or have him compete with Terrence Steele on the right side. We're going to stop right there. Why is there a potential competition with Terrence Steele on the right side? And why does anybody think this? Now, Mel Kuyper, whether you agree with him or not, who the hell is Mel Kuyper? We've all heard this soundbite before. Um, I'm a fan of Mel Kuyper, certainly one of the foremost NFL draft experts and insiders in the business. So what he says is significant, all right? What he says has value. What he says has Does merit. He? And so if he Does is saying, really? based on the people he's talking to, you know, something along the lines of, could the Cowboys have him compete at right tackle with Terrence Steele, our ears perk up. Now, I think we all think Terrence Steele was fine in 2023 for the Dallas Cowboys, but I think beyond that, we think, we know mm -hmm. that Terrence Steele was given a brand new contract extension by the Dallas Cowboys last offseason. Why then would they immediately draft somebody else to compete with him at right tackle after having just paid him? He certainly wasn't bad enough to the point that you're considering moving on from him. Yeah. This is strange. And maybe you're thinking, RJ, you're making way too much of a mountain yeah. out of this tiny little molehill. Yeah, this is it, it, one we're about throwaway comment. This is just one analyst. This is one person's opinion. There's no need to kind of make a big old, you know, huss and fuss about this. Well, I present to you a mock draft from last week from NFL media's Daniel Jeremiah, one of mm -hmm. you know the NFL's mm -hmm. foremost experts when it comes to NFL draft coverage, just like Mel Kuyper. These are two of the very best draft analysts in the biz. All right, you can read the article there from my, or read the title, excuse me, uh, from my article. I wrote about both um, this mock that we're about to discuss and the Mel Kuyper one. You can check those out at blogontheboys.com. But anyway, Daniel Jeremiah's latest mock draft suggests the Cowboys have a need at both tackle positions. This was last week, all right? It was less than a week ago, but it wasn't today. Mel Kuyper's mock uh, dropped on Wednesday. That's the day I'm putting this together for you. Mm -hmm. So, all right, 
what did he say? Let's scroll down here. These are Daniel Jeremiah's words. Whoop, I went too far for you here. Here we go. This was Tyler Guyton, not Jalen Guyton. Um, you know, slip of the tongue a little moment ago. Dallas Cowboys, Tyler Guyton, Oklahoma. This is the Guyton that Mel Kiper was referencing here. With Tyron Smith headed for free agency, these are Daniel Jeremiah's words that we quoted here. The Cowboys can have 2022 first rounder Tyler Smith, man, one tackle spot. Okay, right. He played left tackle in his first year in the NFL in 2022. That wouldn't be weird. Wow. While Guyton takes the other. What? What are we doing here? Why is this it's a conversation? Yeah. What is happening here to where last week Daniel Jeremiah intimated that, <laughs> that Tyler Guyton could take a tackle spot with Tyler Smith taking the other tackle spot, and then that Mel Kuyper would intimate that there could be a competition at the right tackle position. Again, I don't want to sit here and play conspiracy theorists or act silly or act ridiculous or anything like that, but there seems to be some vague idea or assumption that the Cowboys could have a need or competition at right tackle, right? We're not talking about two yahoos or two randoms off the street. We're talking about Mel Kuyper and Daniel Jeremiah. They are two of the most plugged-in people when it comes to the NFL draft. This, uh, this is a line that relates to Jeremiah specifically, and I mentioned this in the article that I talked about. He loves to say all the time that he builds his board, his, his overall board, obviously, ahead of every draft every year with his eyes in terms of how he grades okay, we'll, players, we'll, we'll et cetera, et cetera. There. But he builds his mo- – We'll leave it right there. Thank you, Thank you RJ, on that. Um, that would be pretty bad, actually, if it were. I mean, let, let's be clear. Terrence Steele did not have the season that we had hoped. But, again, this is coming back from injury. And I will definitely say we needed to do better than we did at right tackle. That's not an, an issue right there. But the thing is, is we also have an issue at center. We definitely have an issue at, you know, with Tyron Smith's spot. And if you're going to move Tyler Smith to one tackle, then that means you need a guard. Are we talking about then moving Terrence Steele to guard instead of tackle? Because I don't see you saying you're competing for a spot with an $82 million contract. This is just like warning, warning, warning. You know, this, yeah, and it's not like the Cowboys haven't messed up with big contracts before. In fact, lately it seems like quite a few of them have been Kind of uh, dead money guys. Jalen Smith, Zeke Elliott, Lyle Collins. You know? So we'll see if there's anything to this. I would say this is more of, um, I don't see, here's what I will say. With the Cowboys spending that much money on Terrence Steele, I don't think they're looking and saying that we need to have competition for him they would be better served putting those resources elsewhere and doing their due diligence to make sure that that leg is back 100%. All right, good people. That's all I have on that one. And I appreciate you guys, as always. Peace out.